because when you screw, it'll twist it and it'll be, it'll stay on there. All right. So basically, you put it. One. All right, guys. Welcome back to my channel. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to learn how to properly ground a metal box. Now, I have been on so many jobs. There won't be very many stories in this one. I'm just going to make this kind of quick so we can show you guys how to ground these properly. But I've been through many job sites with many helpers and electricians, and they don't know how to properly ground a metal box, which is kind of sad because this is pretty important. Um, so I'm going to show you two ways to do it. Obviously, there's many more, but uh, the way that I'm going to show you is here, here's what I have right here. So I have a pigtail that is already pre-made at uh, you know the store you can buy them or whatever. And then you also have where you can buy a ground screw, just a plain old green ground screw. And I will show you guys how to make the wire look like this at the end. Uh, it's super easy to do and it only takes a few minutes. Now, just a little information that you may want to know. If you have any device in here or any junction where there's uh, wire nuts, anywhere that is, you have to have a green ground screw in here. Uh, along with a pigtail because anywhere there's a joint in a box whether it be on a device which device is a receptacle switch GFI whatever uh, or just a regular junction box you have to put it in here because if anything was to get loose as far as a wire got loose and touched the box you need to make sure that it's able to ground itself out with the ground now obviously if if the uh, wire was just to pass straight through and there was absolutely no junction so if you have the wire just going in one side and out the other like you're pulling wire and this is just a pulling point box you don't need to do that anywhere the wires are broke with the joint that's where a green ground screw or device has to be at okay all right so now that we got that out of the way let me tell you something else they make this is a nut driver this is a 5 16 nut driver now uh, everything that you see that I'm using here uh, will be down in the description. It'll be an affiliate link to Amazon. Uh, you can buy it through the affiliate link. It helps my channel grow. It helps me do more of these videos and uh, bring them to you guys. All right, so this is what I'm going to use first. Now, I don't always use a 5-16 nut driver. A lot of times I use a Phillips screwdriver. However, this one right here is a 5-16 without a magnet in it. They do make one with a magnet. I do have two of them. One of them is at my work. And the other one apparently grew legs and walked off. But usually... When I had the magnet in there, I could put the, the screw in there and it wouldn't fall out. So obviously, since there's no magnet, you know. All right, so if you come to a box like this, and the, I did this purposely so you guys can see. All right, now first of all, I am in a lot of electrical groups on Facebook and I see that people always bash people for using uh, drywall screws to use metal boxes up against a wood stud. All right, uh, as far as I know, and correct me if I am wrong, there is no code against using drywall screws to mount a box to a wooden wall. As far as I am, as far as I know, I've never seen it. Uh, if you have wood screws, so be it. Do what you got to do. Now, on a wood stud like this, you can really go ahead and just screw it in there to the wood, and everything is, you know, okay. Should go right in. So if you try to put it in and it doesn't go in, chances of stripping that out is pretty good. So what you probably should do. And what I would recommend is you're probably going to have your tools with you at you know most boxes and such. Just take the, uh, another wood screw, a drywall screw rather, and screw it right through there so it makes a channel kind of like you're pre-drilling a hole for um, you know countersinking something. And I'll show you that here in just a second. So before we go any further, I need to show you. Now this is the same box I got here basically. Okay, if you look at this box right here. There's all kinds of holes in the back of it. You know, you got that hole, that hole, these holes, and these holes. These holes. And then on this is a deeper box, as you can see the difference. Uh, basically the same hole lineup. So on this box right here, there is one hole that is a little smaller, as you guys can see, I hope. And it's that one right there. Now that one is threaded. See if you can see the threads in the back. See how you can kind of see the threads? That is where your green ground screw goes. It does not go through here. You cannot legally screw a screw here and wrap a uh, ground wire around it. Now, um, I've seen so many people do that, and it leads me to believe that one of two things when they do that, all right? Now, I'm not talking about at people's homes. I'm talking about on job sites. 
If they do that, uh, it means one of two things for me. They're too lazy to go get a ground screw or they just don't have one. Or I guess it could be three things, and they just, or they just don't know the code, and they just think whatever. But that is where that needs to happen. When you're on a commercial job site, and you have to mount a box, let's say you have to mount it on the back of a whatever, all right? So if you're gonna mount it like this, I wouldn't do that, all right? Because on a commercial job site, let's say this was a metal stud, well, if you're screwing right here, then you put your ground screw right there, and now, you, now you're in a pickle because you really, I mean, you can still do it with the, you know, metal studs are pretty easy. You can just run another screw in there and then run it back out and do your hole like that. But if you were just to turn your box like so, well, now you have it wide open to put the green ground screw in. So you leave it open. So make sure that if you are on a commercial job site and you're, you know, you have to put it on the wall or what have you, make sure that you leave your ground off, off that way. Now, those boxes kind of suck. I'm not going to lie. So I, what I'm doing is I'm showing you guys these boxes because those boxes suck. All right, they make a better box, which is this one here. Uh, they make them in shallow also, but I don't know if you can see or not, but the ground is actually raised up. So it does not matter where in the crap you put that because it is raised up off the back. Your ground screw will stick through, which I'll show you here in a second. And you have no worries putting it any way you want to. You can put a flat on a two by six or whatever, and that ground is fine. They also include another screw hole for the ground too in case this one screws up. See what I did there? So this box with the raised bump of the ground screw is perfect. All right, let me show you what it looks like when you put the ground in here. Now obviously there's no ground wire on it. We'll get to that later. But you see, it's completely flush. So you don't, have, you don't see the ground screw sticking up, do you? No, you don't. All right, I'm not trying to make this video you know, a 60 minute video, because this is pretty cut and dry stuff. But regardless, I'm gonna show you guys now how to ground this, and I'm gonna show you if you have this screw, what to do with it and how to get it the right, correct way, rather. All right, so like I mentioned before, what we're gonna do is we're going to show you how to fix this. Now, um, You, like I mentioned before, you can probably put the ground screw in there, but this is just as easy. And drywall screws pretty much are on every job site, for the most part. All right, you just run it in there, Run it back out. This is if you're using a stud, obviously. And if you you can actually use these on a metal stud also, they will go through. Um, I recommend using a tip similar to this. So you can just slide it up and uh, you know, you don't have to fight trying to hold your screw in there. All right, so if you come and you have just one of these screws like this, you know, like I mentioned before, uh, the easiest way to do this is just get you a piece of green wire and take a pair of strippers. You want to strip a little bit more than normal. Uh, you strip that off like it. Now these are the dual strippers that I use. Uh, the made by Klein, they're excellent. Obviously an Amazon link is down below. What you need to do, now this is, you can just bend the hook. A lot of people do that, but I'm gonna show you a little better way, I think. So these holes right here, I think I've told you before in many videos, that is how you bend your hooks. So what you need to do is put it in there, all right? So you just put it in right through the hole and you wanna, let's say you bend it this way, all right? And then you come up just a little bit. So you bend it right here. You want to come up just a little bit. And then you want to kind of twist, twist. Take your pliers out or your strippers and twist. Now that gives you a, a back bend on it. So when you go to spin it, it doesn't come off as easy because just a regular hook, well, it has a tendency to ride up. Where if you bend it, you know, in an angle, it will stay on there a lot easier. So let's, let's see. All right. So having said all that, now this screwdriver is one of my new, my new favorites. This is what I'm going to use. I'm not going to use a nut driver on this, but basically what this thing right here does is you push this button down and you can extend it. All right. Pull it up and you can shorten it. So it goes pretty long as you see. So, all right. And then when you want to switch it to Phillips, you just take it out. Pull it up, push it down, and then you got everything you need. All right, all right, so how do you put this on without this wire backing out? So basically, if this was in a box, you wanna make sure that the hook is to your right. So basically, you take it and you just slide it over the screw like that. Let me show you. Screw in now, and we're gonna put the wire on here, and we are going to just screw her down, and we'll tighten it up. All right, so what you got here now is you have your ground, 
and then you have your main ground, your bonder ground. Actually, this is the, going to this is what's going to bond your ground to this box. All right. You never want to use, you never want to take this ground right here ever. Like I mentioned before, I've seen many electricians and helpers both. You don't want to take this and wrap it around the screw because if this was ever to break for whatever reason, um, you basically lost your bonding to this, bo to this box here. So what you need to do is you need to put this kind of a ground on it. Obviously they make one with already made up. So if you choose to buy them, that's great. If not, you can just do it like I showed you. You should have plenty of scrap wire on your job site. Most people do, especially on a commercial site. And that's how you do this. All right, so what you do after that, the thing I love about these dual strippers, guys, is I can strip two wires at a time. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna just cut it off here like this. And we're gonna strip it out. Boom. And we are going to take one wire and we are going to twist these together. Always twist, do not do half-ass, and just put the wire nut on it and let the wires twist it. Always make sure you twist your wires. That is the perfect joint, of course. We're gonna put a wire nut on it. And we are going to send it. And there you are. That is the correct way to bond a box. Now they do make clip-on pigtails that you can just clip on the box, which I still think is code. I would not do that. I would prefer this method any day over that because to me, once you screw that in that box, guys, you're golden. It's done and over with. Easy. You can walk away from it knowing that your box is bonded and everything is grounded the correct way. All right, guys, if you have any questions or any video ideas that you want to see, uh, do let me know in the comments down below or send me an email. I'll do my best to get that on. If you like what you see here, guys, like and subscribe. God bless, and we'll see you on the next one. Have a great day.